Hello everyone. Welcome to our class. My name is Ko Chen Li. In today's sections, we will talk about managing file systems. This is today's outline. We will talk about disk and file system structure, FAT and NTFS. Also, we will show you how to use file-based com compression, how to manage disk quota, maintain file system integrity, and defrag defragment disks. The basic unit of storage is a disk, regardless of the partition style or disk type. Windows Server 2008 reads data from disks and writes data to disks using the disk input-output subsystems. The I.O. subsystems understands the physical and logical structures of disks, which allows it to perform read and write operations. Each disk has one or more platters. Platters are the physical media from which data is read, read and to which data is written. The disk head travels in a circular path over the platter. This circular path is called a track. Tracks are magnetically encoded when you format a disk. Tracks that reside in the same locations on each platter forms a cylinder. For example, if a disk has four platters, cylinder one consists of track one from all four platters. Tractors are divided into sectors, and sectors represent a subsections within the track and are made up of individual bytes. The number of sectors in the track depends on the disk type and the location of the track on the platter. And tracks closer to outside of the platter can have more sectors than tracks near the center of the platter. And you can format both basic balance and dynamic balance using FAT or NTFS. As discussed in the next sections, each file system type has a different structure and layout advantage and disadvantage of each as well. An FAT balance use an allocation table to store information about disk space allocations. FAT can be used with both fixed disk and removable media. For both fixed disks and removable media, FAT is available in 16 bits and 32 bits versions, which are referred to as FAT 16 and FAT 32. For removable media, you can also use XFAT. The advantage of using XFAT with the removable with removable media instead of FAT is that XFAT can be used with any operating system or device. Let's suppose this file system type. And file allocation table structures and disk formatted using FAT are organized as shown in figures. They have a book sector that stores information about disk type, starting and ending sectors, the active partitions, and the bootstrap programs that execute as a startup and boots the operating systems. This is followed by a reserve area that can be one or more sectors in length. And although FAT supports basic file and folder operations, 
its features are rather limited. By using FAT, you have the following cap capabilities. And you can use a window file sharing but have limited control over remote access to files and folders. And you can use long file name, meaning files and folders names containing up to 255 characters. And you can use FAT with floppy disks and removable disks. And you can use Unicode characters in file and folder names. And you can use upper and lowercase letters in file and folder names. However, FAT has the following disadvantage. And you can control local access to files and folders using Windows file and folders access permissions. And you can use uh, any advanced file system features of NTFS, including compressions, encryptions, disk quotas, and remote storage. In addition, although FAT16 supports small cluster sizes, FAT32 does not. Table provides a summary of FAT16, FAT32, and XFAT. An NTFS is an extensible and recoverable file system that offers many advantages over FAT and FAT32. Because it is extensible, the file system can be extended over time with various revisions. Because it is recoverable, variants formatted with NTFS can be reconstructed if they, they contain structural errors. Typically, restructuring NTFS violence is a task performed as a startup. Instead of a file location table, NTFS uses a relational database to store information about files. This database is called the master file table, MFT. The NFT stores uh, file records of each file and folders on the volumes. And pertinent volumes information and details on the MFT itself. The MFT mirror stores a partial duplicate of the NFT that can be used to recover the MFT. If any of the records in the primary mirrors become corrupt or are otherwise unreadable and there is a duplicate records in NFT mirrors. And NTFS uses the data in the MFT mirrors and if possible uses this data to recover the records in the primary MFT. Tables provide a comparison of key features of NTFS 4 and NTFS 5. You have the following capabilities when you use NTFS 4. And you can use advanced file and folder access permissions. And you can use a file sharing and full control remote access to files and folders. And you can use a long file names, meaning file and folder names can contain up to 255 characters. And you can use Unicode characters in files and folder names. And you can use uppercase and lowercase letters in files and folder names. And you can use NTFS with floppy disks, but can use NTFS with removable disks. By using NTFS 5, you have all the features of NTFS 4 plus additional features. And you can use encrypting, encrypting file systems, EFS. And you can use the sparse files, disk quotas, and object identifiers. And you can use the repart points, remote storage, and shadow copies. 
and you can use uh, data streams and change journals. NTFS has many advanced features that other administrators should know about and understand. These features include the following. Hot links. Every file created on the files has a hot link. The hot link is the directory entries for the file and it is what allows the operating system to find files within folders. Data streams. Every file created on the files has a data stream associated with it. Change journal. In Windows Server 2008, an NTFS volume can use an update sequence numbers USN change journals. Object identifiers. Another feature of NTFS is the ability to use object identifiers. Report points. On NTFS volumes, a file or folders can contain a report point. Report points are file system objects with special attribute tags that are used to extend the functionalities in the I.O. subsystems. And sparse files. Often scientific or other data collected through sampling is stored in large files that are primarily empty except for sparsely populated sections that contains the actual data. Transactional NTFS Windows Server 2008 supports transactional NTFS and self-healing NTFS. File-based compressions allows you to reduce the number of bits and bytes in files so that they use less space on a disk. The Windows operating system supports two types of compressions. NTF compressions, which is a built-in feature of NTFS. The compressed zipped folders, which is an additional feature of NT uh, Windows available on both FAT and NTFS volumes. And Windows allow you to enable compressions when you format a volume using NTFS. When a drive is compressed, all files and folders stored on the drive and automatically are automatically compressed when they are created. And this compression is transparent to users who can open and work with compressed files and folders just as they do with the regular files and folders. And Windows Server 2008 also provides command line utilities for compressing and uncompressing your data. And compressed zip folders are another option for compressing files and folders. And when you compress data using this technique, you use the zip compression technology to reduce the number of bits and bytes in files and folders so that they can they use less space on the disk. And compressed zipped folders have several advantages over NTFS compressions. Because the zip technology is an extension of the operating system rather than the file system, compressed zip folders can be used on both FAT and NTFS volumes. And zip it folders can be password protected to safeguard their contents and can be sent by email. And these quotas are built-in features of NTFS that help you manage and limit disk space usage. And using these quotas, 
you can monitor and control the amount of disk space people who access the network can use. And without quota management, it is hard to monitor the amount of space being used by individual users and even harder to control the total amount of space they can use. And you can, in fact, do the following. Configure the disk quota system to monitor disk space usage only. Allowing administrators to check disk, disk space usage manually. Configure the disk quota system to monitor disk space usage and generate warnings when users exceed predefined usage level. Configure the disk quota system to monitor disk, disk space usage. Generate warnings when users exceed predefined usage levels and enforce the limits by denying disk space to users who exceed the quota limit. And by default, disk quota are disabled. If you want to use the disk quotas, you must enable quota management for each balance on which you want to use disk quota. And you can enable disk quotas on any NTFS balance that has a drive letters or a mount point. And before you configure disk quotas, think carefully about the limit and warning label. Set values that make the most sense given the number of users who store data on the volume and the size of the volume. After you, you enable disk quotas, the configuration is set for and applies to all users who store data on the volume. If you want to set a specific quota limit or warning label for an administrator, and you can do this by creating a custom quota entries for that particular user account. And you can also create custom quota entries for users who have special needs, requirements, or limitations. A figure shown any existing quota entries are shown. The entries show the following information. Status, the status of the disk entries. Name the display name of the user's account. And logon name, the logon name and domains if applicable. Amount use the amount of the disk space by the user. And quota, quota limit. The quota limit set for the user. The warning label. The warning label set for the user. And percent use the, the percentage of the disk space used toward the limit. And users are notified that they have reached the warning label or quota limit when they access the volumes on which you have configured these quotas. As an, as an administrator, you want to check for quota violations periodically. And there are several ways you can do this. And one way is to access disk management, right-click the volume that you want to check on, and then select properties. And you can then check the current disk usage of users and see whether there are any quota violations. And you can check quota entries from the command line as well. And if you want to use the same quotas on more than one NTFS balance, 
And you can do this by exporting the quota entries from one variant and importing them on another variant. And when you import quota entries, if there isn't a quota entry for the users already, a quota entry will be created. If a user already has a quota entry on the warrants, you will be asked if you want to override it. As part of routine maintenance, you should periodically check disks for errors. The primary tool to do this is a check disk, which is implemented in both a graphical and a command, command, command line versions. File data is stored in clusters and the data, uh, Windows operating system uses a file table to determine where a file begins and on which clusters it is stored. With FAT, the file tables use is called the root directory table. It defines the starting cluster of each file in the file system. If a file's pointers or mapping is lost, you might not be able to access the file. FAT tries to prevent disk integrity problems by maintaining a duplicate file allocation table. They can be used to recover the primary file allocation table if it becomes corrupt. And beyond this, however, FAT doesn't do much else to ensure disk integrity. NTFS, on the other hand, has several mechanisms for preventing and correcting disk integrity problems automatically. NTFS stores a partial duplicates of the MFT, which can be used for value recovery. NTFS also stores a persistent history of all changes made to files on the variants in a log file. And the log file can be used to recover NTFS metadata file, regular data files, and folders. While these file structure recovery mechanisms all have in common commons is that they are automatic. And you, as an administrator, doesn't need to do anything to ensure that these disk housekeeping tasks are performed. And these mechanisms are perfect. However, an error can occur. The most common errors related to the following areas. Internal errors in the file structures and free space being marked as all allocated. Allocated space being marked as free. And partially or improperly written security descriptors. Unreadable disk sectors not marked as bad. Uh, using check disk, you can check for and correct any the common disk errors discussed previously. Check this works on FAT, FAT32, and NTFS violence, and primarily look for inconsistency in the file systems and its related metadata. Check this has two modes in which it can be run. It can an analyze a disk, checking for errors, but not repairing them or it can analyze a disk and attempt to repair any errors found. A new for Windows Server 2008 is that check disk has been optimized so that it runs faster than previous versions. And you can run the graphical version of check disk by using either Windows Explorer or Disk Manager. And disk analysis for NTFS violence is performed in three stages. 
During the first stage of analysis, CheckDix verifies file structures. This means CheckDix examines each file's records in the MFT for consistency. During the second stage of analysis, CheckDix verifies directory structure by examining directory indexes, starting with the valence root directory index, which is stored in metadata file. CheckDix examines the index records making sure that each index record corresponds to an actual directory on the disk and that each file that is suppo supposed to be in the directory is in the directory. It also checks to see whether there are files that have an MFT record but that don't actually exist in any directory. And during repair list, lost files can be recovered. During the third stage of the analysis, CheckDix verifies the consistency of security descriptors for each file and directory objects on the variants using the secure metadata file. It does this by validating that the secure security descriptor work. As files are created, modified, and moved, fragmentation can occur both within the variance or location table and on the variance itself. Windows Server 2008 provides a tools for defragmenting variance called the disk defragmenter. To reduce fragmentations, Windows Server 2008 can manually or automatically defragment disks periodically using disk defragmenter. The more frequently data is updated on drives, the more often you should run this tool. Windows Vista within SP1 or later and Windows Server 2008 automatically perform secret pickup. Defragmentations. With these features, when a scheduled defragmentation pass is stopped and returned, the computer automatically picks up the next unfinished volume in line to be defragmented. And using disk defragmenter, you can check for the correct volume fragmentation problems on FAT, FAT32, and NTFS volumes. The areas checked for fragmentation include the volumes, files, folders, the page files, if one exists, on the volumes, and the MFT. And being able to check the MFT is a new feature for Windows Server 2008. Another new feature is the ability to defragment volumes with cluster size greater than 4K byte. And understanding the fragmentation analysis, the summary of the volumes, configurations, and space usage reports on the following areas. File fragmentation gives an overview of file level fragmentation showing the percentage of used space that is fragmented. The total number of files in on the, on the volumes that are movable. The average size of those files, how many files are fragmented, the total number of exist fragments, the average number of fragments per file, and the total number of unmovable files. Free space fragmentations gives an overview of fragmentation on a valence unused space. Showing how much free space is available on the valence, the number of extents on which free space is located, the average free space per extent, and the largest free space extent. And folder fragmentations 
gives an overview of folder label fragmentation, showing the total number of folders on the variance and how many folders are fragmented, and master file table fragmentations. For NTFS, variance only gives an overview of a fragmentation in the MFT, showing the current size of the MFT, the number of records it contains, the percentage of the MFT in use, and the total number of fragment, fragments in the MFT. If you run defrag again without the dash A parameters, the disk defragmenters will set about cleaning up the drive to give optimal space usage. 